Hello, everyone. My name is Deborah, and welcome aboard. We're heading into the back lot of Disney's Hollywood Studios. I see the bone cage. Area was built in 1988 as a Florida counterpart to Walt Disney Studios in Burbank, California. We included sound stages, recording studios, high-tech editing rooms, all the tools needed to create movies, TV shows, and radio broadcasts. We've even got our very own water tower, too. It's up ahead, high in the sky on the left side of our shuttle. We call it the Earful Tower. It's inspired by the water tower Walt Disney had built for his Bourbon studio in 1939. Our Florida tower stands a lucky 13 stories high, and we added our own creative touch, a giant set of Mickey Mouse ears. If you wanted to wear those ears, you'd have to have a hat size of 342 and 3 8 up ahead, after the next bend in the road, you'll have a perfect opportunity to take a picture of this famous icon. Ooh, ooh, ooh. In the world of entertainment, oh. every project starts with a screenplay oh, and a lot of creative thing. ideas. A production studio is where the ideas of writers, producers, and directors are transformed into an on-screen reality. Within these There's the water tower! Yep. Filmmakers can literally create their ooh. own world. Our Florida sound stages are soundproof, weatherproof, and most importantly, air conditioned. All vitally important for the cast, crew, and equipment. Many of the crafts needed for filmmaking are located right here on the lot. On the left, we have our own greens department. It grows flowers, trees, shrubs, and topiaries. A few well-placed plants can cover up empty spots in the set and add a touch of natural beauty to a scene. On the right are two of the aircraft from the 2001 blockbuster hit Pearl Harbor. These exact full-scale replicas of P-40 fighters were used in the special effect fight sequences. Of course, many of the planes you saw flying through the aerial battles or sitting on the ground weren't real at all. They were created entirely within a computer. Oh, keep your cameras focused to the right. We're coming up on that perfect angle of the Earful Tower I told you about. It's a true masterpiece. Right up there. We're entering one of our most glamorous and colorful departments, creative costuming. Every star has to have just the right wardrobe, and it all begins here with a designer's sketch. Our team of designers, seamstresses, and tailors can turn one and a half million yards of fabric into over 25,000 costumes every year. Many of these costumes will become part of the shows and attractions of the Walt Disney World Resort. In fact, here in Florida, we have the largest working wardrobe department in the world. Why, Mickey Mouse alone has over 175 different outfits to choose from, while Minnie Mouse keeps more than 200 unique costumes in her wardrobe. On the left are costumes worn by the stars in recent studio productions. You'll probably recognize some of these costumes from the big screen. Every story needs a say, and our design staff can create just about any place a script calls for, from an urban city street to a remote desert canyon. On the left is our scenic shop. Ooh, yeah! Parts of the Caribbean! Cool! Carpenters, artists, and engineers has created caves and caverns, game show sets, even replicas of the U.S. Supreme Court and NASA's Mission Control, all on our sound stages. The shop also provides sets and props for our shows and frames here at Walt Disney World. <laughs> the same scale and craftsmanship that goes into a movie set can also be used to create magic for our parts. Either way, it's all about making dreams come true. We are entering a zone we call the Boneyard. It's an outdoor storage area for oversized props and vehicles. Cars, trucks, boats, planes. There's the bone cage. Save these props in case we need them for future productions. In this backlog collection, you'll typically find real working vehicles, non-working mock-ups, and even large-scale miniatures used in special effects shots. For example, that jet plane is from the 2005 action thriller flight plan. Large-scale models such as this one create a more convincing illusion on camera. To add to the illusion, the team even placed small cutouts of passengers in the windows. We are now passing by the sets hey. of our Lights, Motors, Action the, uh, Extreme Stunt Show. Yeah, On the left, you may the catch a glimpse of the Mediterranean Fishing Village that sets the stage for this thrilling attraction. We'll get a Look closer familiar. look at soon, but for now, we're yeah. approaching one of the largest standing sets on our backlog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's over on the right. 
Hey, that's what happened to Herbie when he uh, split. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think I got a good shot of that, but now. Yeah, Herbie went into the explosives and went to pieces. <laughs> yep. Oh, oh. Plane crash. This is great, folks. The production crew is just giving us clearance to enter the set. Hello, Backlog Tour. I'm Amy, a production coordinator here at the studios. I can see your shuttle heading toward our canyon set. I've given your driver permission to come in and take a look around. I'm up here with our effects crew, and we're getting ready to shoot a test sequence. Oh, on the way in, you're going to be crossing a wooden bridge, and things may get a little bumpy, so please, hold on to your belongings, especially hats, cameras, and glasses, and keep an eye on any small children in your party. And of course, please remain seated at all times. Welcome to the set. As you can see, we brought the bare, dry deserts of Southern California to green, typically humid, Central Florida. This set is based on real locations that our production designer took pictures of. Our set crew spent about six months building the canyon, but we've used it for a number of TV shows and specials over the years. For our upcoming production, the script called for a tanker truck. We found this one in our bone yard, but it was too big to drive into place. So we picked it up with a crane and set it down here. We're up on the overhead platforms and I see our director has arrived. As soon as the rain effect is ready, we'll begin the sequence. <laughs> this sudden shower is really just a special effect. We've rigged up a series of water nozzles just above your tram. The water sprays in a crisscross pattern to create a sense of depth. But this storm only covers the first few feet of the set. <laughs> Okay, it's showtime. Everybody stay seated. Hang on to your belongings and watch your children. Wow.
In 1964, Walt Disney and his hand-picked team used this plane to scout locations for what he called the Florida Project. Soon, they secretly began purchasing thousands of acres of land, which became the Walt Disney World Resort in 1971. During the creation of the resort, and later Epcot, the mouse shuttled studio executives and Imagineers between Burbank and Orlando, making it the most used executive aircraft in the country. Appropriately, the mouse retired here in 1992. As Walt used to say, it was all started by a mouse. In this case, the 234 Mickey Mouse. On our right, we once again sweep past the magnificent Mediterranean village of our Lights Motors Action Extreme Stunt Show. This high-octane attraction is based on the hit show from the Walt Disney Studios Park in France. In this action-packed production, you'll feel like you're right there on the set during the filming of a spy thriller, complete with custom-built cars, motorcycles, even jet skis. You'll experience a split-second timing, coordinated driving, and fiery special effects that make action movies a real blast. There's the first This skating area to our right is known as Acceleration Alley. Here, the custom-built stunt show vehicles rev their engines up to 70 miles per hour before making their high-speed entrances onto the stage for our Lights, Motors, Action Extreme Stunt Show. Of course, these are professional stunt drivers. We hope you'll enjoy their daring driving skills, but please, don't try them yourself. On the left, we've reached our second boneyard with more historic props and vehicles. When we reuse older props in a new production, they're often refitted with custom parts and given a whole new color scheme. You might not even recognize them the next time you see them on screen. For instance, coming up is our friend Kirby the Love Bug. He went through a special demolition derby makeover. Those dents and dings were added on purpose, but he can be polished up as good as new for his next starring role. What is this? I don't recognize that, though. On our right, we now have a very different view of the fishing village set. From this point of view, you can see that there is no inside of the buildings. They are just false fronts, or facades. In the movie business, set builders only create what the camera has to see. It's an old movie trick dating all the way back to the silent era. To add to the sense of realism and avoid the cost of set building, many of today's television shows and movies film on location in cities and towns across the U.S. But out in the real world, you've got to contend with noise, traffic, and crowds, and various visual elements that may or may not belong in your film. Here on the back lot, we can avoid those problems because we created our very own flexible urban environment. Our Streets of America facades can stand in for a small town or a giant metropolis. As we come around the last corner on our route, you'll see the skyline of New York City in the distance. It's really a series of painted flats, expertly designed to fool the eye and the camera. We can dress and decorate these streets to look like hey, any city we want, right. from Chicago to San Francisco. Depending on the choice of vehicles, props, and costumes, we can even turn back the clock and set our story in a different are built with Florida weather in mind. They're made to withstand 100 mile an hour winds. We've just about reached the end of our tour. Our final stop is the American Film Institute Showcase, where you can see the actual costumes and movie props used in some of Hollywood's most famous films. There are some pretty amazing items in there, so feel free to take all the time you like. Please stay seated until our tram comes to a complete stop, and check around you for any personal items that may have fallen during our trip. Uh, all right, everyone, please remain seated to 